Hello everyone. I wanted to make a quick video to help you get started with homework one. In this class, I usually have people with little to no experience in Python, so this video is mainly for them. I won't usually give this many hints for homework. The due date for the homework is in Piazza, and I've given a little extra time because some people may be joining the class during the week or even next week. This homework gives you experience with regular expressions, which is a very important text processing skill. And also the purpose of this homework is to make sure that everyone can write a simple program in Python that reads in files and processes the data. I'll show you how to get started with PyCharm, but feel free to use another IDE if you prefer. I will tell you that I'm not a fan of the .NET Visual Studio framework, so I strongly recommend that you don't go that route. You'll run into some inconsistencies with standard Python and dealing with some of the packages we're going to use later. So it would be much better to use a real Python IDE like PyCharm, which is free. Let's take a look at the homework instructions. There is a data file in Piazza, data.csv, that actually looks like this. And the scenario you're imagining is maybe you were hired for an internship and someone had already started a system to keep track of employee data, but they didn't do a very good job and you were hired to clean up what they'd already done and to make a better system. So the problem with the system is that there's inconsistencies in capitalization, in the way phone numbers are stored, and also in the employee ID. So your task is to download that file and put it in a data folder like this. And we'll look at that in PyCharm. And the user needs to specify the relative path in a sysarg. And I'll show how to do that in Python as well. And the way I want you to do that is a way that will be platform independent because we have a situation where if you're on a Windows computer it makes the slashes in one direction and if you're on a Mac or Unix it makes them in the opposite direction. So to make things uniform for the TA um, I'll show you the way I recommend this and we'll do that for the first homework and then once we get a TA he or she may have a different way they want you to do that. I want you to get a little experience making a class, so you'll make a class for a person. There's examples of making a class in the GitHub. And then the main processing. The processing just deals with standardizing the data. And then once you have all the data correct, you'll create a dictionary of persons. And then I'll give you experience here in saving a data structure in a pickle. So a pickle file in Python is just a way to compactly store data in a way that you can read it right back in. And I'll show you this code in Python. Here's a sample run. Your code should try to fix the things that it can to standardize as much as possible. These are situations where the program either won't be able to fix it or won't easily be able to fix it, catch it with a regular expression. And so what you'll do is ask the user for the correct data. Once you have all the data correct, kind of in this empty space, think what's going on is that you're saving a dictionary of these person objects to a pickle file, turn right around and read it back in, and then print out their information. All right, using PyCharm, if you want to create a new project, you just give it a name. And then you specify which Python interpreter that you want. Here I'm going to use 3.8. The first time you use PyCharm, you may have to go out there and find where yours actually is and copy that information in here. When you hit Create, this is your main folder here. When you want to create your Python file, you could say New and then say Python file and give it a name. And make sure you have comments with your name. All right, also to set up the data file, again, I'm going to right click on the folder and I'm going to go to Reveal in Finder, which may look a little different on a Windows computer. And 
this screen popped up with my finder view. I'm going to go into that folder. I'm going to make a new folder called data. And then I'm going to copy the data file that I downloaded from, from Piazza into there. Once I go back into PyCharm, if you don't see it there, you may have to right click on it and say synchronize to reload it. Another way to set up your data folder is just to right click on your main folder and say new directory and then go from there. And now I'm ready to go and read my data. Here's a solution for homework one, a partial view of it. And I don't mind showing you this because there's a few things I want to point out. I only have one function, which is above here. I'm not showing that part which processes my data. That function has all of the regular expressions and text handling and everything else. And this is just the main code that will fire things up. So notice I have a little arrow here, meaning that I can run it right from there. This is a standard way of starting up a program. When a Python interpreter reads in a file, everything at the leftmost level will be read in and executed. So up above I have my DEF process lines and then the next thing at this leftmost level is this IF. So this is saying if this is a standalone program run this code right here. The first thing I want to check is if the user put in a system argument and if they didn't I'll print out a message and then I just quit. Alright so how do we do that? We could go up here to Homework 1 and we could edit our configurations. And right here under Parameters, I put the relative path to the file. All right, given that the user did put that in there, I'll save that relative path. And these are the lines of code that I would want you to use to make sure that your program would run cross-platform. So it will use pathlib to join that relative path to the current working directory, CWD. Open the file for reading. This part right here will read in the entire file, split it on new lines, and put that into text in. So text in will actually be a list of strings, where each string in the list is actually a line from your CSV file. So I'll send that file skipping the header line, so that's the one colon will skip over the header line. I'm sending everything else to my function that will do all the processing. And the function will return employees, which is a dictionary of the employees. Then I'm going to do a pickle dump, and you'll have to import pickle for this. The first argument to pickle dump is what I want to dump out there. And then the second argument is the file name which I want to open as binary. So I'm writing binary out there. Then I'm going to turn around and read it back in. So this is kind of pointless in this program. I just want to do to get experience dumping something out to a pickle file and reading it back in. In future homeworks we'll create some data object that we want to save for a different program and so typically that's how you use a pickle. You do some processing, dump your data out to a pickle, and then in a separate program, read that back in so you don't have to do all that processing over. And then I'm going to iterate over what I read in just to make sure and verify that it pickled and unpickled correctly. And for each employee, I'll call the display function to display their information. PyCharm has a really easy to use debugger. So instead of running, I could run by hitting this button uh, run or debug, notice the pop-up, and I can run or debug here. So let's say I was concerned about how this data was read in and I wanted to take a look at it. I just hit a breakpoint by clicking over here after it's been read in and then I'll hit debug which will run to that point. So it'll stop wherever I had this dot here and then I can look at the objects. So I can actually look at my data and just expand it. It tells me that it's a list and it shows me individually each item in the list. Then I could just quit or continue on however I wanted. Once you stop at a certain point, you have these options here. You could step over that 
So in other words, I don't really want to go into this function call here. I want to go step over that. Or I could go ahead and step into it. Very intuitive interface and very nice debugger. All right, I think I've given you a lot of hints here on how to get started on the homework. And don't forget, you can ask plenty of questions in Piazza.